Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. You know, when Thursday rolls around, it'll bring more top radio entertainment to you over these NBC stations. Thursday starts right off in high gear with Robert Young starring as heroic and harassed Jim Anderson of Father Knows Best. The Andersons are just like your family, but funnier, for the head of the household can get himself involved in situations that take the concerted effort of wife and progeny to get unraveled. And usually Jim rises from the battle bloody but unbowed, and still firmly convinced that father knows best. For adventure fans, Thursday holds the promise of top mystery listening also, as NBC presents Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons, who matches his deductive reasoning against the violence and murder of crime. Later, join Jack Webb as Sergeant Joe Friday of Dragnet, the true story of your police force in action. Father Knows Best, Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Hear all these and more Thursdays on NBC. Now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Blood Trail. It is 7.30 on a Saturday evening in July, 1929. For a week, an oppressive blanket of heat and dust has surrounded the town of Whitney in the Texas panhandle. Despite the unpleasant weather, however, Whitney is enjoying its usual Saturday night activity as Sheriff Dave Fellows strolls down Main Street. Red, you're as stubborn as a mule. Oh, howdy, Sheriff. Uh, howdy, Harry. You having trouble? Oh, just a little argument with Red. <laughs> Another one? Oh, he's just plumb stubborn. Won't admit nothing. Well, what won't he admit this time? Well, it's like this. I've been living near Whitney 40 years now. Been around the panhandle all my life. And I say this is the hottest July since Oct. 2. And Red says different, huh? Red says it's hotter than the summer of 18. I say 18 wasn't near as hot. Now, what do you say, Sheriff? Now, Harry, you know I make a practice of never taking sides in an argument. But if you want the facts... Well, I just come from my office. Weather report on my desk says it's the hottest July in 65 years. <laughs> I know it. I know it. <laughs> I sure wished I was wrong, though. If this heat don't let up, I'm going to be a poor man. Don't look like nobody's going to make a crop. Yeah, everybody seems to be worried. Can't remember when we had... Ch- uh... Hey, who's that over there, sir? Hmm? Where? Oh, yonder. Coming toward the drugstore. Uh-oh, looks like a drunk. I better get on over there. He sure got a sneak fool. <laughs> hey, Sheriff, ain't that old Doc Thomas? Doc Thomas? Well, yeah. You're right, Harry. I didn't know Doc was a drinking man. Besides, he's got office hours till seven on Saturday. You better help me get him off the street. People are starting to look at him. Uh, sure. Who'd have thought that old Doc had t- Sheriff, he's walking out in the street. He'll get here. Doc, hey, look out, Doc, there. look out, Doc! <laughs> Come on, Harry. Hope he ain't Somebody hit bad. Uh, on, maybe not. The car just grazed. Move into it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, now help him. Help him out. He's a hurt bit. bad. Do do something hey, help. one of you folks call hey, Dr. Fields and tell him to hurry. Right, Jeff. We'll do it. Give me a hand, Harry. Right. 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 We'll, we'll get him up onto the sidewalk. Sure. Now. Easy now. Easy. Poor Doc. Get him out of here. Reckon this was the first time he ever took a drink. This had to happen. All right, folks. Move back, will you? Give us some room here. All right, sure. Set him right down here, Harry. Easy now. Yeah. There we are. Is he hurt? Yeah. Oh, that blood. I didn't think that car hit him that hard. Yeah, it didn't. Look at his shirt. It's soaked. He's been bleeding a long time. You mean when he was staggering down the street, he was already hurt? It appears that way. From the look of it, somebody gave the doc an awful whack on the head. But who'd want to do that to old Doc Thomas? I don't know. But I'm afraid we're not going to find out from him. Doc Thomas is dead. It 
was easy for the sheriff to trace Dr. Thomas's path before he was hit by the car. Drops of blood on the sidewalk led directly to the doctor's office on a side street, four blocks from the scene of his death. The sheriff called for a Texas Ranger. Ranger Jace Pearson was assigned joining the sheriff outside the doctor's office at 5 o'clock Sunday morning. Sorry I couldn't get here sooner, Sheriff. Austin told me you were the nearest ranger, Jace. But they said you were quite a piece away. Yeah, Wichita Falls. Reckon you'd like to take a look at his office first. This is the waiting room. Not much to see here. It's the office that'll give you a shock. You know what the actual cause of death was yet? Loss of blood. Had a skull fracture, too. Haven't found what he was hit with, though. Look at there, Jace. Some mess. Not a stick of furniture left in one piece. It, look out for that broken glass. Never would have thought old Doc Thomas could put up such a fight. Didn't he ever have a nurse here with him? No. I figure he couldn't afford it. Treated everybody, rich or poor, the doc did, and didn't mind waiting to be paid. Did he have any money on him when he died? Oh, I don't believe it was robbery, Jace. He had about 15 bucks in his pocket. Uh-huh. Yeah, the phone's ripped out. Looks like he was trying to call somebody. Maybe not. Could have been tore out during the fight. I don't think so. Cord's out of the way of any furniture that got pushed over. And look at the way the wires are torn. Now, I'd say somebody meant to pull them out of the wall. One thing I don't understand. If the fellow that had this fight with Doc wasn't after money, he probably meant to kill him. Mm, sounds likely enough. Well, then why didn't he? The way the Doc was weaving when I saw him, it would have been a cinch for the killer to catch him before he ever got to Main Street. I think this will answer your question, Sheriff. That spot of dried blood? Oh, but how, Jace? There's blood spots all over the office. And some in the waiting room. None as large as this. From the size of it, he must have been lying here at least a few minutes. Could be he got knocked unconscious. Killer thought he'd finished his job and took off. And you figure the doc came to, got up, and staggered downtown, huh? Yeah. Say, the fight must have made quite a racket. Any of the neighbors hear anything? Yeah, I checked that. People on both sides were out. Downtown for the evening. Uh, you looking for something special, Jace? Yeah. And I've got it. Doc's appointment book. Hmm. Only one appointment after five o'clock. Six thirty, Carl Hinkle. You know him, Sheriff? Sure. German fellow. Lived here about ten years. I guess he would Hey, wait a minute. I think we're on to something, Jace. How do you mean? Carl Hinkle's wife. The doc delivered her baby about six weeks ago. Mrs. Hinkle died right after the baby was born. I've heard around town that Carl blamed the doc for her dying. I see. Where does Hinkle live? Not far from here. Over near the Santa Fe Depot. Come on, Sheriff. Let's wake him up and have a talk with him. It was 6.10 when we reached Carl Hinkle's home. It was a small but neat frame house fronting the railroad tracks. Nobody answered our knock, so we walked around to the back door. Hinkle was washing something out in a laundry tub on the porch. He was a big blonde man who looked at us stolidly as we walked toward him. Morning, Carl. Good morning. Uh, Carl, this is Ranger Pearson. He and I'd like to talk to you. Well, I'll show the inspector. I tie my hands. Pretty early be doing washing, isn't it, Mr. Hinkle? Yeah, I wash for the baby. Mm, some of your own clothes there, too, aren't there? Mm, I wash for myself, too. You always do the baby clothes yourself, Carl? Well, nobody does for the baby but me. My wife is dead, so I got to do for the baby. Mr. Hinkle, did you visit Dr. Thomas last night? Oh, yeah. Why? Oh, I owe him money. I go to pay him. Every week I pay a little. Do you usually make an appointment just to pay him money? Nine. Uh, no. But you made a special appointment last night. Why? Well, I have an ache in my leg. I asked the doctor to fix it. So why do you ask me these questions? Somebody murdered the doctor last night. Murdered? He was killed just about the time you were in his office. No, but I uh, I didn't do it. We're not saying you did. Girl. Yeah, but this is what you mind. I'm I mean, what's what you think, no? Nah? Mr. Hinkle, your wife died while she was under Doctor Thomas' care. Yeah. Did you blame him for her death? He should have been more careful. Now I'm left with an empty house and an empty heart. If he'd been more careful, this wouldn't be. But you still say you didn't go in there last night and kill him. I went in there for the ache in my leg. What are you giving us, Carl? You went to get treated by a man you didn't trust? Well, with my wife, he made the mistake. For this, you'll be with me twice careful. 
You know, Mr. Henkel, you were the last person to see the doctor before he was attacked. Nein. Uh, I was not. Then who was? Well, when I come from the office, a man sits in the waiting room. Do you know who this man was? Yeah, sure. I've seen him many times. Uh, uh, Mr. Horner. He must uh, mean Tim Horner, Jason. Cowhand on Jim Ford's ranch. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. He goes into the doctor when I leave. All right, Mr. Henkel. We'll check your story. But if it doesn't hold up, we'll be back to ask you some more questions. Let's go, Sheriff. We drove out to the Ford Ranch. It was a small place that had seen better days. The ranch house needed a coat of paint. Some rusty farm machinery leaned against the side of the barn, and an old jalopy sat next to the house. In a corner of the barnyard, a Mexican was hammering some crates together. As we approached, he started kicking at some chickens which pecked around his feet. How do you make it? Hey, buenos dias, senores. Chickens, they're always on the porch. One cannot even do the work. Deb, can I help you, senor? Is Mr. Ford around? Pero no, senor. He's with the cattle. But uh, he's going to be here any minute now. We're looking for a man named Tim Horner. Is he with Mr. Ford? Oh, I- I'm pretty sorry, senor. I only come to the ranch for yesterday to help senor Ford with the boxes, sir. There is uh, one man who worked with senor Ford, but <laughs> I don't know his name. A big fella? About the size of the ranger here? Got black hair? Si, sí, si, sí, that's the fellow. Sí, sí. Uh, yesterday afternoon, I see him. What about this morning? No, no, senor. This morning when I come to drink the coffee, he's not here. Uh, when Senor Ford go out to the cattle, he's still not here. <gasps> God, I make him very angry. Oh? Yes, yes, yes. When this man, he is not there, oh, Senor Ford, he curse and swear, and he do... Oh, oh, there, here's Senor Ford. He gonna tell you about this, oh, man. Oh, boy. Hey, howdy, Jim. Howdy, Sheriff. Morning, Ranger. What can I do for you? We're looking for that hand of yours, Tim Horner. Well, I reckon that makes three of us. When I find him, I'm going to break him in half. Mm-hmm. It's the only hand I got, and he walks out on me just when I need him most. When did you see him last, Mr. Ford? Uh, yesterday evening. He asked me if he could go into town. I said, sure, if he'd be back here at daybreak this morning. He ain't showed up. Don't reckon he will, neither. What makes you think that? I'll check the place where he sleeps. All his stuff's gone. Look, uh, why don't we go over on the porch where we can sit and be comfortable? Uh, take care of the horse, Jose. Hey, si, senor. I do that for you. After all I'd done for that boy, Tim Horner, now when I only need him a day or so longer, he takes off. Are you moving somewhere, Mr. Ford? I'm selling out, Ranger, lock, stock, and barrel. Well, I didn't know that, Jim. I ain't said much about it. But figure I had about all I want of ranching. Party's been after me a long time to sell him the place. Here, sit down. Yeah. I'm going to take it easy from now on. When Tim Horner left you yesterday, was he Sick? Sick? <laughs> That boy never had a sick day in his life. He was just lazy, that's all. Here, how come you're so anxious to find out about Tim? A doctor in town by the name of Thomas was murdered last night. Oh, yeah, yeah. I heard about old Doc Thomas. It's too bad. He was a fine fellow. Uh, well, what's that got to do with Tim? We're pretty sure Tim was in his office just about the time Doc was slugged. That's so. You think, uh, you think maybe Tim was the one who killed him? We don't know yet. But his skipping out's not going to help him any. No, I don't reckon it will. You just never know, do you? Now, who would have thought a boy I had working for me was a killer? Well, I sure hope you find him. We will. Come on, Sheriff. Let's get back to town. On the way to town, I radioed Austin and requested an all-points bulletin on Tim Horner. Then the sheriff and I started combing the countryside. The rest of Sunday passed without any luck. Early Monday morning, I stopped at the sheriff's office to pick him up. Good morning, Jace. Howdy. We didn't get an awful lot of sleep last night, did we? We'll make up for it after we get Tim Horner. Yeah, but when that's going to be, I don't know. Appears like he just plain disappeared. That's one thing people can't do, Sheriff. Sometimes they take a little longer to find, but sooner or later they turn up. You ready to get moving? As soon as I finish marking these last two reports. You know, it just beats me, Jace. Why Tim Horner'd want to kill old Doc Thomas. Don't guess we'll know that till we find Tim. Well, I reckon I'm ready. Where you want to start today? 
How about the Stony Creek section? Suits me. I just... Uh, oh. Just a minute, Jace. Sheriff, fellas. Yeah? You did? Where? Yeah. Yeah, we'll take care of it. Well, you were right. Tim Horner's been found. Good. They're bringing him in? Uh Uh-uh. We have to go get him. He's dead. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. America needs more nurses. Nurses are a vital factor in our country's all-out defense preparations. And in addition, hospitals and clinics, growing by leaps and bounds, have an ever greater demand for trained staffs. All this spells opportunity for you if you are a young woman looking for a good career. It means a secure job at good pay, a chance to serve your community in a fine profession. Your nurse's training will provide you with a first-rate education, too, at far less than the cost of four years in college. You'll study interesting subjects such as psychology, chemistry, anatomy, and child care. And when you receive your nursing degree, you can choose from among the wide variety of interesting fields open to nurses. You can enter the armed forces with the rank of lieutenant. You can choose hospital or private duty, industrial or public health nursing, the airlines or the Veterans Administration. Start now on a good career of which you can be proud. Visit your local hospital and learn about the opportunities open to you in the field of nursing. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Blood Trail. Tim Horner's body had been located ten miles out in the brush by two boys on a camping trip. We drove within a mile of the spot where a highway patrolman was waiting with the boys. The youngsters pointed out where they'd found the body. We left them with the patrolman and then took horses the rest of the way. You reckon Tim got scared and took his own life, Jace? That's something we'll know pretty quick. There's the three big boulders, Jace. Just like those kids said. Yeah, it must have been their campfire off to the left. Ooh, ooh, Charlie. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It sure is a wild spot. Hadn't been for those kids, we might never have found him. Uh-huh. Should be right around this middle boulder from what those kids say. Jace. Yeah. Pull that brush away from him, Sheriff. That's the man we've been looking for? It's Tim Horner, all right. Shot twice, through the chest. At close range. Look at the powder burns. Let's turn him over. <laughs> Well, we can be sure of one thing, Sheriff. He didn't kill himself. How do you figure that? No blood on the ground, so he wasn't shot here. Whoever did it carried him out here after he was dead. He sure went to a lot of trouble. He probably figured it was worth it. Almost was, too. See what you can find in his pockets. All right. Wallet. A little bit of money. But... Hey, Jace, look at this. A box of pills. <laughs> Reckon Tim was ailing after all. Could be. Yeah, but Jim Ford said Tim hadn't been sick. Uh, Jim Ford could have been wrong. It's a cinch there's a tie-in between this murder and Doc Thomas getting killed. If we find out what kind of an ailment Tim had, we might get a lead. But how do you figure to do that? Tim ain't gonna do any talking now. Maybe he will, Sheriff. What's on your mind? Autopsy? Let's get moving. We got a lot to do. We got Tim Horner's body into Whitney at one that afternoon and requested the county medical examiner to make a rush autopsy. He told us to wait in the pathology lab of the hospital. A little less than an hour later, he joined us. Well, gentlemen, I must say I've never done such a quick job. I'm sorry, doctor, but it's necessary. I dare say it is. If it helps find out who killed old John Thomas, I'll do anything. What'd you find out, doc? Hey, careful, Sheriff. I don't want to break this slide. Uh-huh. I want to make a preliminary examination... And I can tell you one thing definitely. What's that? Tim Horner died sometime Saturday night, probably before midnight. Why, that'd be only a few hours after Doc Thomas died. Anything else, Doctor? Yeah, Tim was a pretty sick boy even before he died. What was wrong with him, Doc? I'm going to tell you in a minute, as soon as I examine this slide under the microscope. You got an idea what it was, Doc? Uh-huh. On this slide is a section of the dead man's spleen. It was very badly diseased. 
Could mean any number of things. Didn't I get it set here? Yep. Yes, I thought so. And I wanted to be sure. You know what it was now? It was anthrax. Anthrax? Huh? But that's a cattle disease. Also found in man. Contracted from sick stock and from contaminated ground. Does that help you, Ranger? Maybe. It might just clear up our whole case. I don't follow you, Jason. I'll explain on the way. Thanks, Doctor. You're welcome. Jace, where are we going? Out to Jim Ford's ranch. Jim Ford? You think he's the man we're after? Look at it this way, Sheriff. If Tim Horner had anthrax, chances are he got it from sick cattle. Maybe from burying them at the place where he worked. You mean Jim Ford's cattle are sick with anthrax? It'll take long to find out, but I think they are. Say, that could explain why Jim was so anxious to sell out all of a sudden. Right. And why he couldn't let anybody discover his stock was sick. Otherwise, it'd have to be destroyed and he'd lose everything. So the way you figure it, Tim knew the cattle had anthrax, but he didn't know he had it. Until he saw Doc Thomas. And once Doc knew there was anthrax around, he was bound to report it. Well, how would Jim find out about that? Could be he picked up Tim at the Doc's office, found out he had anthrax. Yeah. And that might be why he had to kill both the Doc and Tim to keep him quiet. Something like that. Now I understand why you're pushing that accelerator so hard. Jim would be anxious to get his money for the property as soon as possible and then beat it. If he hasn't already. Well, suppose he is gone. Let's find out first. Yeah, Jim's old jalopy ain't here. Well, that could be a good sign. He said he was selling out lock, stock, and barrel, and I doubt if he'd try to make a getaway in that thing. Maybe he's in town or somewhere closing the deal for the ranch. Uh, won't take long to be sure. Let's try the door. Yeah. Looks like the bedroom's back this way. Mm -hmm. Don't appear like he's taking much with him if he has gone. Yeah, but if he's skipped, he's probably traveling light. I... Hey, Sheriff, listen. What is it, Jace? Sounds like that jalopy of his coming up the road. You don't think he's coming I don't back? know. Let's get outside. We want to take him alive. Don't shoot unless you have to, Sheriff. What he did to old Doc Thomas, shooting's too good for him. Oh, that ain't Jim at all. It's Jose. Yeah, buenos dias, senores. Where's Mr. Ford, Jose? Oh, he make the big deal. Senor Ford get money for the ranch. Ooh, so much money. I never... Where is he? Uh, I, I take him to the railroad depot so he can wait for the train. Which train? The one that go that way. North? That's the limited. What time does it leave Whitney? 4.32. And it's 4.15 now. Come on, Sheriff. We're going to catch a train. I don't know if we can make it, Jay. She's just pulling out. Come on. I, I, I don't think we'll catch her. We'll make it. Go on. Hey, Porter, don't close those doors. Hold it. Grab for that railing, Sheriff. Got it! Can you make it, Chase? Yeah. You know, this This ain't the easiest way to board a train. Keeps you young, Sheriff. You ready to go? Yep. Well, he's not in this car, Jason. Yeah, we'll try them all. I sure hope Jose didn't give us a bum steer. Somehow, I don't think he did. There's a diner up ahead. Reminds me, we haven't eaten since morning. Yeah, better not to think about it. Oh, that food sure smells good. Jason. Yeah. Looks like Jim Ford got hungry, too. His back's to us. We move in and take it? No. Talk to him first. Sit down at his table. Come on. Howdy, Jim. What? Mind if we join you, Mr. Ford? Well, no. Sit down. Didn't know you fellas were traveling north. Neither did we till a few minutes ago. How about you, Mr. Ford? Well, uh, me, I, I sold my ranch like I said I was going to do. I don't mean to get nosy, Jim, but uh, how much did you take for the ranch? What am I telling you, Sheriff? 16000 A little expensive for run-down property and sick cattle, isn't it, Mr. Ford? What are you talking about, Ranger? Tim Horner had anthrax. He got it from your cattle. 
Why, you're crazy. Not as crazy as you for thinking you could get away with killing Doc Thomas and Tim Horner. <laughs> well, can you, can you prove that, Ranger? I think so. And we'll start with this. Hey, what are you doing? Just taking the gun out of your shoulder holster. So big, I couldn't miss it. Well, Ranger, you got my gun. You still can't prove nothing. I won't have to. We got a ballistics lab for that. And while we're waiting for the lab report, you'll cool your heels in jail. Oh. Oh. On what charge? You can't hold me until you get some proof. That's right. And in the meantime, we're holding you for carrying a concealed weapon in a public place. Who are what you? Are you? He's going out the far end. Don't fire too many people. Grab him, Jace, grab him. I got him. Let me go, let me go. Take it easy, Ford. You'll get off soon enough. Then you'll take another little trip that ends in Huntsville. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. There's more good radio listening Wednesday night on NBC. Wednesday, come to Ivy College in the town of Ivy, USA. Yes, walk the pleasant campus of Ivy College with Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman as Dr. and Mrs. Hall of Ivy. There's adult comedy and heartwarming human philosophy in each sparkling broadcast of the Halls of Ivy. Then, P.B., Gildy, Judge Hooker, Leroy, and all the gang bring you a half hour of mirth and music with the one, the only, the great Gildersleeve. Later, Groucho Marx is your genial paymaster of ceremonies on You Bet Your Life, radio's merriest quiz show. There's prize money for lucky contestants and fun for everyone as Groucho Marx asks, asks the questions and provides the laughs. And for High Adventure on Wednesday, hear both Big Story and Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Yes, Wednesday means top entertainment on NBC. Stay tuned to the NBC Radio Network. Every day of the week, the finest entertainment is as close as this station. Now back to Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Ballistics evidence proved conclusively that Jim Ford had killed Tim Horner. He was tried and convicted of first-degree murder. Ten months later, he confessed to the killing of Dr. John Thomas with a paperweight from the doctor's desk. Jim Ford died in Huntsville Penitentiary of a kidney disease on June 17, 1930, just 20 days before he was due to go to the electric chair. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of the Texas Rangers. Joel McRae is currently seen starring in the Universal International Technicolor production, Cattle Drive. The cast included Tony Barrett, Tim Graham, Henry Rowland, Parley Bear, and Barney Phillips. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel, and the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keach. This is Hal Gibney speaking. Starting Wednesday, Robert Montgomery tells how a citizen views the news over NBC.